Hello everyone, welcome back for another episode of Let's Play Mario & Luigi Ballad Inside Story. In this episode, we are going to explore Peach's Castle, which might actually be called Fafel Castle because he kind of took over the place. We see those uh, blue Koopas from episode like 23 or something, or maybe it's 22, where I was just doing the terrible blue Koopa accent. It's really the only thing I remember about that episode was just like <laughs> that I titled it Terrible Blue Koopa Accent. Um, so there's that. I spent entirely too long trying to figure out how to get that attack block without realizing that it was uh, too high. We have new enemies, although they're essentially just palette swaps of old enemies and stronger. I don't know if you can call it a palette swap in. A game, like in a DS game, because a palette swap was more of a thing you did in NES or probably even SNES game. But, I mean, these guys, for all intents and purposes, are palette swaps of the other mole guys, if they're not. I would think they are, because it's, you use sprites in this. I like how, um, I just only loosely related, but I like how in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, all the characters, like, have a palette swap, uh, like, correspondent or whatever, so, like, Piston Honda and Mike Tyson are the same body, I'm pretty sure, and Soda Popinski and Super Macho Man, and, uh, Bald Bull and Mr. Sandman. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out is just a great game. I like it a lot. I have the Wii Punch Out as well, and that one's fun. I, I got to. I, Mr. Sandman took me forever to beat, and Super Macho Man took a long time as well, and now I'm on Mike Tyson, and uh, I haven't played it in like probably over a year. But <laughs> just because I don't want to fight Mike Tyson, because that is hard. I'm not really talking about what's going on, I'm just talking about Punch Out, because Punch Out's really cool. These enemies are pretty much the same as before, so I guess I don't need to describe anything. What I didn't understand is, so Suda Popinski in the original um, Punch-Out for the arcade was Vodka Drunkinski, and you know, they just changed it to Soda Popinski because they wanted to be able to sell the game to kids. Or at least I'm pretty sure that's why it makes sense. But, you know, Soda Popinski seems like that would be the original name because Popinski just like flows well, but Drunkinski that like sounds so clunky. It sounds like you're 13 and coming up with a parody of the game because I don't know, or not like of the entire game, but it's just like you think calling him Vodka Drunkinski is funny. But that was actually his name in the original Punch Out game. And uh, here's the uh, blue block thing, or the yeah, the blue block to get the shell. We're gonna get a bunch of attack pieces, which is really nice. You know, the first time I ever fought Super Macho Man in Mike Tyson's Punch Out, I knocked him down two times in the first round. I was like, okay, Super Macho Man is super easy. This will like take me no time at all. This is way easier than when I was trying to fight Mr. Sandman because that took me a long. Oh God, that took me a long time. But then he like beat me, even though I'd already knocked him down twice in the first round, and just I like never did that well again until the time I finally beat him. Punch is just a fascinating game, though. There's so much you can do to uh, like like get better at it. There's so many strategies you can use, like for a game like an NES game, you wouldn't think it would be there as like as much strategy as you can do. So, uh, I guess that's all I have to say about Punch-Out. I'm on uh, Aaron Ryan in title defense mode in the Wii Punch-Out. I should beat that at some point. Anyway, I'm uh, rambling on about Punch-Out, because uh, it's a cool game. These blue Koopas are like, hey yo, you took our attack pieces, we wanted those. And then the leader guy's like, hey, you give us some money, we'll let you keep it. I mean, we already have it, so I don't know why we don't just, like, run away. That guy's like, 30 coins, yo. And Mario's like, 30 coins while wow, these guys are losers. That's nothing. Like, I make that after, like, 
one battle against the first enemy in the game or whatever. So, um, yeah, the Mario and Luigi used a uh, classic negotiating failure technique. I don't know. Classic negotiating mistake, I guess, would be more accurate. And they were like, oh, 30 coins, that doesn't mean anything to me. So you should have just, like, paid the 30 coins and then you would have been fine. Then, but whatever. So now they up the price to uh, 300 coins, and in return for 300 coins, they're going 300 coins. They're going to help us out. And if you're playing along, 300 coins. I mean, it's probably not that big a deal, but there's also a ton of coins in Peach's Castle anyway. So if for whatever reason, like, if you just spend all your cash, it's extremely easy to find 300 coins around here if you need to do this. So, uh, yeah, you can do that. And then this guy will show you where the last three attack pieces are, which is pretty convenient. He just gives us the general location, which is a tad inconvenient, but it's certainly less inconvenient than having to find them all ourselves, so I'll take it. They're gonna go away with their cash, and I'm not sure what they're gonna do with it. Just, uh, Promote gang violence, I guess. By running gang violence advertisements. Like, hey, do you want to join a gang and kill other gangs? Well, then do we have the gang for you? And then you join a gang and uh, get in indoctrinated into the gang. Indoctrinated is not the right word. But yeah, I don't even... What am I talking about? This <laughs> is so stupid. I'm talking about gangs. Yeah, so any gang, you just kind of like say, Hey, I want to join a gang. And they let you in. And then you go and kill people. And... I just, why am I saying words right now? I'm not saying anything that's like relevant or true. Or um, useful. Or anything that anyone wants to hear. Because that is like... Definitely not how gangs operate. And, you know, let's just stop talking about gangs before I embarrass myself anymore. These, uh, the spots here are unfortunately not beans. So, yeah, that kind of sucks, but it's okay. I don't remember when I actually ended up using my beans, but I did at some point. I was just going to talk about something else. Oh, yeah, I remember what it was now. So I talk about music occasionally in these videos when I'm, like, bored and not really doing anything else. Here's our 8th attack piece, by the way. I think for the rest of the video we're just going to be kind of running around getting and stuff, because there's a lot of stuff to get here. Which is really nice, because it's just the last area in the game, so they got to get you a bunch of stuff. As you can see, we've already gotten quite a bit of money. But so music, as I was saying. I, um... Mentioned Appetite for Destruction a couple videos ago by Guns N' Roses, so I don't know why there's this like little area here. Oh, you can go through here. So yeah, that's why. Anyway, I mentioned Appetite for Destruction a couple videos ago, and so I wanted to uh, listen to some other stuff around the same time period. So I started listening to Poison. They were a glam metal band back from the 80s. I listened to their album Open Up and Say Ah, and I actually really liked it. My dad was saying how he didn't like Poison as much as Guns N' Roses because um, at the time there had like the musical thing was uh, like new age rock or whatever I'm not really sure that what that was and bands like Poison and Motley Crue were just like really showy they were the hair metal bands you know and then Guns N' Roses came along and they were just straight hard rock and it was just a breath of fresh air there's yeah, a little rock history for you, but, um, so he didn't like Poison as much for that reason. And I still think I probably like Guns N' Roses more, but Poison is, Poison is good. I like Poison. So, uh, yeah, there's my musical endorsement for today. If Poison wants to sponsor me, they can. Or Guns N' Roses, or, uh, whoever. <laughs> Any musical artist I've ever mentioned. Speaking of musical artists, I got to hear, um, I went to New Orleans for my birthday and got to hear Ed Sheeran about a month ago, so that was really cool. 
I really like Ed Sheeran. I actually um, started listening to him just because I knew he would be playing at Jazz Fest, and I just liked him, and then went to Jazz Fest and heard him, and it was cool. So yeah, if Ed Sheeran wants to endorse me, go right ahead. I don't know why Ed Sheeran would be watching this video, but if he is, hi Ed Sheeran. Although there's probably only going to be like seven people who ever watch this video. So the chances of one of them being Ed Sheeran or one of the members of Poison is extremely low. So anyway, we're going to uh, continue on running through here. I was kind of baffled by this uh, these iron bars here that don't let you uh, cross. I'm not really sure what I was doing here while I was just running back and forth. But we're going to continue on and we have another battle. And we have a new enemy here. These guys are... Um, I don't know, some Fawful something or other Fawful robots. McChawful. McChawful or McChawful? I don't know. Who cares? But so, these guys are not too bad. They have pretty high defense. So they can take a while to kill. They pretty much have... Huh, do they have two attacks? I think so, where they'll like fly at you. We should see them in this battle, I think. I'm pretty sure I got pretty much everything um, that they do. They can either fly and drop right in front of you, as you've seen two times already, or they're going to fly right on... Yeah, right in front of you is what they just did. Or they can also go right on top of you, and you just have to hit them, and they'll uh, fly forward and hit another enemy. If the... Uh, I don't think they would hit the moles if you deflected them. But if there was another Machoffle here, Mechoffle, then I think those guys are tall enough to be hit. Let's see if... Yeah, that was that attack right there. And then they'll fly into another enemy. Which is nice. Always good when you can use the enemies against themselves. So... Yeah, and then... Once you kill them, their head will fly off. And you actually have to kill the head or else they can... Uh, they can call in another body, which is pretty annoying. So, you want to avoid that. And that might have been what he just... Oh, okay, no, he was just flying, he came in, dropped on us. So yeah, you want to try and avoid them reforming their bodies, as I was saying. And yeah, I cut out the rest of that battle because we'd already seen those, uh, Monty Mole guys. Looks like I was kind of a bit lost here. So I guess I'll just keep talking about stuff. Um, I, I don't even know. We have another fight that I cut out and I'm just gonna... <laughs> wow, this is awkward. I just really do not know what to say. So, uh, yeah, How, how's the weather with you guys? <laughs> Comic question of the day, oh my god, this is awkward. <laughs> yeah, I think I, yeah, but okay, by this point I figured out what I was doing and where I needed to go. So we come in here, uh, get stuck on the wall a little bit. I don't know if when these things happen, when I get stuck on the wall, if it's like a glitch in the recording mechanism, or if it's just that actually happened. I figure it's just what actually happened, because I think if there were a glitch in the recording, then, like, the entire thing would be messed up, because, as I've already mentioned, I recorded in the emulator, then have the emulator play it back through the game, because it recorded my button presses, and then record that. Yeah, anyway, so, this is where we will find our last uh, attack piece. There's a bunch of blocks in here, which is nice. We can get a lot of Monet, because we need the Monet, the Claude Monet. And, yeah, I jumped around here for a long time, so I sped this up, because I just could not find that other attack piece, and it did not occur to me until too long that I should go up on the railings, because, spoiler alert, that's where it is. But, yeah, now... No, well, not yet. Soon, we will have our last attack piece, and we will get the 
most powerful attack in the game, in theory. It's uh, it's a good attack, and I don't really know what to say because I'm just waiting for it to happen. And wow, it really took me a long time <laughs> to figure this out. But it's okay. I was, I was learning, so next time I'll understand it better because. Everything is a learning experience, if you let it be. I think we're about to get it here. Yep, there we go. So that is number 10 attack piece. We get our new special attack. And we will show that off here. It is Falling Star. If you execute it well, it is extremely powerful against a single enemy. So great against bosses, typically. I'm kind of decent at it. But there's another special attack that we'll get in a little bit that I prefer to this one. So basically, just whatever color the star is, have that bro throw the their own little stars at it. It's gonna like start flashing the other color. I think you don't actually um, switch to the other bro though until it's fully switched. But anyway. We have about 30 seconds left, so that is all the time we have for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and let's be honest, you probably didn't. So anyway, I'll see you guys next time in episode 38, where we will do some more exploring, and have a good time. See you later, and have a good day.